Costa on. On the left, it's Vizoyu. On the right, it's Vino. And it is Vizoyu who gets a superb one. I think Elinus maybe has got a good start as well as in immediately the two MW Arden cars behind Alvaya and Carlos Sainz Jr. Instantly try to uh, scrap amongst them. Vino goes defensive. Down the inside there goes one of the uh, car in, as one of the Arden cars rather. Couldn't quite see which one of them it was. Plenty of scrapping going on through the midfield. We've already seen some dramas in the first race and a bit of a lock-up there from Daly trying to get past his teammate Regalia, but it all looks like hopefully they managed to have been sensible on the first lap. Yeah, that looks like Carlos Sainz has just taken P3 away from uh, Tio and Las Robert Vizio with a fantastic start. Certainly surprised me there. He uh, got a storm and get away. Yeah, and Fuminelli, well, his day goes from bad to us. Ironically, it was Adelie Fong and David Fuminelli that tangled on the first lap of race runners to the inside. Is that Ericsson? I think it was having a look down the inside, but not quite being able to make that one stick. These early lap or two is when you do tend to see him a little bit more of a chance of people trying to push to overtake. Yeah, Robert Vizio who's just gaffing the whole field already, storming first lap. Aravainio is going to be chasing him the whole way and doesn't want to let him get away. Tio and Lass looks like he's all ready to make a, an attack back on Carlos Sainz. Yeah, Jack Harvey now under a little bit of pressure, I think. Uh, was that either McKee or Niederhauser, I think, just immediately behind him. But Vizoyu, well, we weren't quite sure whether he was going to have enough pace. We mentioned earlier that the MW Arden cars is a big fan of cars in the background, getting almost four abreast. The MW Arden cars were the quickest cars on race pace in race one. It was Carlos Sainz Jr. who set the fastest lap on a, a mid-124, a couple of seconds away from the pole time to be expected. And uh, used tyres are a much, much hotter part of the day. But at the moment, it does look like, uh, certainly in the early lap, it's a very, very strong first lap by Vizoyu. Connor Daly, the fastest first sector. So clearly the ART man, he's already looked... Has he got past Regalia? No, he hasn't. I think he's dropped back away from Regalia, maybe to uh, ensure that he has some clean air. Now, we had interesting, you had an interesting conversation with Nick Cassidy, who, of course, we were maybe expecting to see as uh, Jimmy Erickson and, and Josh Webster get side by side. And just behind that, I think that was perhaps Lewis Williamson having a little look as well. You were talking to Nick Cassidy, you noticed a couple of interesting things about tyre wear on those drivers. Yeah, certainly it looked like that Connor Daly had a much more balanced car in race one than, uh, than Regalia. I think Regalia was suffering a lot more from understeer from the start of the session because Connor Daly ran three new sets of tyres in, uh, in qualifying and Regalia only ran two. So obviously that's the reason why he was so close to him at the start. But uh, Tio Unless, again, is all over the back of Carlos Sainz. It'll be interesting to see actually what tyres he was running, it's a shame we don't know. Well, interesting there, Visoyu sets the fastest lap of the race, 125.5, two tenths quicker than Vainio, so certainly uh, Visoyu looks like he's dealing with Lichtenstein, well, his car didn't get off the grid in race one, problem in race two, so sadly for Eric Lichtenstein, along with Fuminelli and Fong, just uh, a very difficult weekend for them, no points at all. Well, this is where it's going to get interesting. Carlos Sainz now sets the fastest sector one. It's a very short first sector, just over 19 seconds. It's only really the first sort of three turns, isn't it? Yeah, just the turn one, which is a very high, high, high speed corner. And I think obviously we saw we saw Carlos Sainz go quickest through that first sector, and he's benefiting from not following a, a, a car closely. So he's able to go through turn one at a high speed and and just yeah have the fast sector one. Elinus there, just dropping away a little bit from Sainz. Meanwhile, Sainz, because of those first, uh, that first sector being so quick, has maybe started to take a little bit of time back out of Haro Vigno. Championship wires, Sainz uh, is down in 12th, sorry, 10th position at the moment on 12 points. There is Dino Zamparelli, the young Bristolian driver who has uh, looked, looked very strong this weekend, certainly looked very at home in the uh, Mauritius Manor car. No doubt that he will continue to make progress as the year unfolds. Great opportunity for Dino to really establish himself in international motorsport. There's confirmation now the gap's halved that time round. It was four tenths quicker was Vino than Vizoyu that time through. Sides, Elena Svayat, Korshus, Regalia and Daly pretty much as per. And then Zamparelli, McKee, Niederhauser now. Yellowly's dropped back a little bit. He uh, started 12th, he's down to 14th. Likewise, Jack Harvey uh, has dropped back behind both Niederhauser and Fontana. So uh, I think that was a bit of a, uh, a scrappy first couple of laps. 
and the rest of the grid as perhaps we would have expected. Interesting is to see whether that man, Connor Daly, can start to make some progress as the race unfolds. What tyre options do you think they've gone for in terms of uh, where they're at? Just the, the second set of qualifying tyres you'd think that they're probably using? Most likely either the set that you've done you've done the least amount of laps on. Maybe you've done a short short run in in uh, in, in Q1, and then uh, maybe a longer run in uh, in the second run in qualifying. And you probably you probably would have kept your best set for race one. Or it depends on where you're starting. If you'd have gone to try and get the reverse grid pole, or if you're looking to score more points in the second race, then you obviously would have saved your best tyres for this one. Um, but again, Tier and that's really really close behind Carlos Sainz. He, it looks like he's got the measure in, but it's going to be difficult to see if he can overtake. Yeah, it's going to be very, very tough. It has been shown, but Vizoyu is actually one of the only drivers in, right at the front that really did make some progress. Science and Fiat made a little bit of progress because it was a bit scrappy on the first couple of laps. But uh, certainly after that, once it settled down, and once everyone was starting to fight the progressively uh, degrading tyre situation, now it's a medium compound tyre that Peretti have issued to everybody. And as you said earlier, it's three sets of tyres for the weekend. So that uh, tyre management affected also by the lack of uh, F1, GP2 and Super Cup cars here. Yeah, it makes the track a lot more consistent for the teams to work with and they won't have to second guess which way the setup's going. Carlos Sainz has set the fastest lap of the race. Uh, actually only a few tenths away from his fastest lap in, in race one as well. So he's obviously got a lot of pace in that Arden car today. Which is interesting when you look at how close Tio Elinus is to behind him. So that shows you an indication that, that Sainz, Elinus, Fiat are all pretty much running at the same pace of use. Um, just a little bit further away, and I think he's feeling a bit of pressure from Regalia. Regalia must be buoyed by that first race result, because he really did take the race to Daly. Uh, and you can see by the reaction when he got out of the car, that he was really proud of what he'd achieved. So I'm sure that the confidence level is high. We were talking about how ART Grand Prix is so good at really bringing drivers along, getting the most out of them. I think Regalia is, is a really a classic case in point. Yeah, I, I think ART are just... They're just winners through and through and they've won in every category they've been in. So you can't help but be inspired by that when you turn up to a team like, like ART. Interesting now, Pizzoglio has increased his gap up to 1.155. Lap time wise, last time through, 125.7. Uh, and 125.7. Yeah, it was more or less the same in terms of lap times between the top two. And then further down the order, it starts to drop away. It's those two at the front that are wrapping really quickly. Josh Webster actually uh, setting the fastest lap of anyone on that lap. 125.310 for the 19-year-old uh, English driver in the nine-group car. James Palmer and the rest of the guys very much behind him and the status team. Uh, helping him to progress and make a little bit more of an inroad into international motorsport. It's strange really, since Carlos Sainz has set that fastest lap, he's... He's kind of back. He's kind of dropped away from Aro Vigno, so it, I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe he, he is just trying to bag the points for fastest lap and making sure he's got got clear space to, to be able to do that and making it count while the tyres are still fresh. Just saw the 20 car of Lewis Williamson in the Global Energy Group car from for Bamboo. Good to see Bamboo as part of this uh, this grid. As meanwhile, a bit of side by side action, trying the long way round for the uh, 25 car of uh, Venturini always well, going to be a tough move to pull off around there I would imagine Alex <laughs> yeah uh, I can't imagine that Jimmy Erickson would be gifting him that but he looks like he's got quite a good toe down into turn one let's see if he'll looks like yeah Jimmy's he's defended but not hard enough and it looks like Venturini's going to nearly not yeah. quite no he's going to make it stick into turn two though I think yeah he's get it done um, always a difficult situation when you you're that far down the inside someone Alex because you know you're hoping that the guy's going to be sensible and give you enough racing room. You've done enough to persuade him, I suppose, is the word. No, absolutely, as long as you've, <laughs> you've, yeah, like you said, persuaded him to give you at least a car's, lip, a car's whip, then that's enough for you to uh, send it down the inside. Uh, there's also an element there, isn't it, as the driver in front, where you're going to try and squeeze back on the guy to hope that he's going to, uh, squeeze back across on the guy to hope that he's going to back out of it, but at the same time, you know, you're kind of worrying if it just understeers. Maybe he can't stop. He might understeer into the side of you, and, and suddenly the pair of you are off. That's uh, very true. It's always a it's always a dangerous game to play. But that's the thing when you're overtaking. You you've got to be taking calculated risks. 
Now, the race leader last time round, Robert Bazo, you took, set his personal fastest at 125.222, which was half a second quicker than uh, Iro Vino extended his lead up to 1.993 last time round when they crossed the line. 125.885 it is now, 1.993 seconds is that gap. Vino not quite having an answer, in fact, he is uh, around about three tenths slower than Carlos Seitz. He was looking pretty comfortable in third position. Ellenus, meanwhile, lapping uh, around about 126.1, so a couple of tenths slower than Science himself. So within a couple of tenths of each other, all fairly stalemate. Yeah, it's unfortunate, really, that these guys aren't able to, to follow closely. But Robert Visa, really driving a cracking race so far, just pumping out consistent lap times, just bettering his own personal best nearly every time he, he comes round. This is his golden opportunity to take his first victory in GP3 and the experience that he's picked up at such a young age of racing, as we said earlier, in Formula Abarth and also uh, did some Formula 3 testing when he was just 16 years old and into last year, of course, his debut season in GP3. As you see, uh, Melvin McKee coming down the pits now. It looks to me like there's been a tyre change, sort of wheel being rocked back into the box. So Melville obviously uh, having some sort of an issue early on. Yeah, maybe a puncture or something there. But yeah, it's very impressive from Robert. He's only 17 years old and this is a pretty pretty high-level championship to be winning races at. Yeah, well, we've seen this before from drivers at a very, very young age that they can manage to establish themselves early on in the sport. At the end of the day, there's such a pressure now on young drivers to make their way up the ladder towards uh, their... Now, let's have a look at this start again. Talk us through what you're seeing here, Alex. It looks like the Tio Enlas had a... Had a bit of a bit of a bog down from the uh, from the initial start, and then you see him releasing the clutch very quickly as you see the car jolt into life. And yeah, maybe not the best start there, but yeah, not, he he held position through through turn one, but then lost out later on in the lap. Yeah, it looked like Science had momentum on Vino, but Vino uh, got across very very quickly to to defend there. You can see Zamparelli's tyres already at that early stage look like they've uh, worked pretty hard. Yeah, just picking up a slight bit of pickup already on the opening few laps. There is uh, Josh Webster in the status Grand Prix car. Different livery for.